everyone, and welcome to episode 104 of PIV's NXT Point of View Podcast. My name is Bill Pivots. So this week's episode took place at the CFE Arena at the University of Central Florida. It was the return of Shinsuke Nakamura, but the show uh, wasn't the greatest. The crowd was quiet for most of the night, so it kind of made for a poor uh, show. But a lot of things happened that built towards uh, TakeOver Orlando, so let's get into it. The show started with Ty Dillinger versus Eric Young, or what was supposed to be that match. Before he made it to the ring, Eric Young sent the rest of Sanity back. Before the match began, Sanity threw out Roderick Strong, who was, his shirt was ripped, he was a little bloody. Uh, but the crowd gave no reaction to this, they really didn't care. Ty Dillinger left, checked on Roddy, no way Jose came out. Ty and Jose ran down to take out Sanity, but the numbers game caught up to them. Killian Dane and Alexander Wolf hit a running knee power slam combo on No Way Jose, and Eric Young hit the wheelbarrow neckbreaker on Ty before leaving. Yeah, uh, like I said, I don't know if it's the crowd or not, but they just didn't seem to care. I don't know if it's because Sanity has go wee heat and they don't really care about Sanity, or they're just this segment was just whatever. Uh, but there was like four people that you could be clearly heard chanting for No Way Jose. Uh, overall, I really think this feud between Dillinger and Eric Young needs to end. It's not going anywhere. It's not helping, I don't think, either one. But they're going to stretch it out till TakeOver Orlando, where I think Sanity will get the win, and Ty Dillinger will move up to the main roster after that. Billy Kane, and Peyton Royce were walking around the Performance Center looking for a place to place their Breakout Star Award. They spotted Ember Moon in the gym. She stared at them through the glass and then ran out to confront them. We got a vignette for someone. We really didn't see any features. It looked like they were in a church and they had the word hero tattooed across their knuckles. Should be interesting. Second match, Ho-Ho Loon versus Andrade Cien Amis. Early in the match, Percy Watson was talking about uh, Amis and his attitude and his like cockiness. McGinnis then said Percy made a career being called Showtime. What career did Percy Watson have besides one season of NXT? Anyway. Uh, Amos was in control for most of the match. Loon made a little bit of a comeback with a second rope drop kick and a kick to the midsection, but Amos caught him with a huge clothesline and won with the hammerlock DD tape. Yeah, I really don't have anything to say about that. Third match, Ember Moon versus Billy Kay. Kay and Royce, uh, they did like a pretend kiss kind of thing, and when Kay turned around, Ember Moon caught her with a drop kick and a running crossbody. Peyton Royce got involved early, which allowed Billy Kay to attack Ember from behind. Ember... Tried coming back with two forearms. Kay caught her off the ropes with her own forearm to the face. Made a nice sound. Crowd reacted to that one pretty nicely. Ember made her come back with a bunch of kicks. After a running knee in the corner, she went to the top. Royce tried distracting her, but it wasn't enough as Ember won with the Eclipse. After the match, though, officials ran down to check on Kay. She was holding the side of her neck, but she was able to move her arms and legs, so I don't think it was a legitimate injury. They would have stabilized her right away if it was. They wouldn't have had her move. Uh, It took her a little while to get to her feet, but when they did, the crowd did give her applause. So just in case, let's hope everything is okay. As for the match, it was alright. Billy Kay was aggressive early, which paved the way for Ember Moon's comeback and the finish. They kept playing up the fact that Ember Moon has never been pinned or submitted, and neither has Asuka, so I could definitely see that being the major storyline of their title match leading into TakeOver Orlando. We then got a backstage interview from TJ Perkins about coming back to NXT. Fourth match was supposed to be the Revival versus the Ely Brothers, but the Authors of Pain took out the Twins before making it to the ring. Authors of Pain then went after the Revival, but Dash and Dawson ran into the crowd, escaping their fate. So uh, they're obviously building towards the Triple Threat match with the Authors of Pain taking out or trying to take out the Revival after their attack last week. We're just going to see how DIY gets into that as well, because they obviously still have problems with both teams. The Revival interrupted their tag title match with the Authors of Pain a couple weeks ago, and they actually still need their rematch without any interference. So DIY will get involved sooner rather than later. Because right now, it just looks like it's Authors of Pain versus uh, the Revival. William Regal was shown with Ember Moon, and he announced that she will face Asuka for the NXT Women's Championship at TakeOver Orlando. So that match is official. Tom Phillips had a sit-down interview with Cash Desono. They were actually side-by-side, not across from each other, and it annoys the hell out of me. Uh, He talked about his past experience in NXT and hyped up their match match next week. Rude was then shown via satellite from Toronto. He interrupted Phillips. He really doesn't care about Ono or what he had to say and how he's trying to make NXT a better place. The main event was Shinsuke Nakamura versus TJ Perkins. The crowd finally livened up when Nakamura made his entrance. Now, there's a lot of mat wrestling and some grappling early. 
Perkins had uh, Nakamura in a head scissors. He dabbed, and then mock uh, Shinsuke's come on taunt, where he like does like the just bring it kind of thing. Nakamura escaped. He also dabbed, and the crowd popped for that. Perkins missed a springboard drop kick to the outside, and he received a kick to the head from Nakamura as they went to the first commercial break. Perkins landed some quick strikes and, a sp- and the springboard drop kick. He then hit a huge jumping DDT from the apron to the top rope. Nakamura made a comeback with some kicks. He, le- he went for his running knee, but uh, Perkins dodged it and then targeted his hurt knee. He was kind of playing heelish during this match, but he wasn't going full-blown, uh, b- like breaking referees' counts and stuff like that. Nakamura locked in a triangle. He then transitioned to an armbar. They went back and forth between armbars before Perkins locked in a modified Boston Crab. Perkins then transitioned to in- into a knee bar, targeting that hurt knee. For some reason, the crowd was just not buying into the submissions. They weren't, like, cheering up Nakamura or anything like that. They were just waiting for him to escape. He's, I guess they just knew the match wasn't going to be over. So they were just waiting for the next spot. It kind of took a lot of people out of the match. I was just kind of waiting, too, and wasn't really any drama behind it. Nakamura landed his knee strike in the corner. Perkins dodged a uh, Kinshasa. Nakamura hit a single leg backstabber before hitting the reverse exploder and winning with the Kinshasa. Overall, it was a great match. I actually enjoyed it a lot, besides the quiet spots from the crowd. Uh, Perkins, like I mentioned, was acting kind of heelish, targeting Nakamura's knee, but any opponent is going to target their opponent's uh, injury to get the upper hand. Uh, He actually got a lot of offense in, which was nice, and I wish they would just bring in uh, a lot of the Cruiserweights, too. NXT can use the depth. We're seeing what they're doing with the UK guys from the uh, UK tournament, just bringing them in to add some extra depth to the roster and Cycling the Cruiserweights could actually do that as well. They did it with Perkins, and they don't have to fight each other. If Perkins and Nakamura just had a great match, you can pair them up with other guys like, I don't know, Brian Kendrick against Ty Dillinger or something like that. Uh, overall, uh, they had some great exchanges in the match. The submission uh, transitions were nice, and the counter of signature moves, Perkins dodging the way, and Nakamura escaping, stuff like that. After the match, though, Regal had another announcement. He said that the winner of the title match next week between Bobby Roode and Cassius Ono will face Nakamura at TakeOver Orlando. Uh, As for the show, it was definitely a one-match show. Ty and Eric Young and the Revival and the Ely Brothers never got started. Almas won a squash match, and the women's match didn't really go long enough for me to get too invested in. Uh, TakeOver is starting to take shape. We have the title match, Nakamura versus either Bobby Roode or Cassius Ono. Almost booked is the three-way uh, tag team title match, and it's official, Ember Moon versus Asuka. Now we just got to get the undercard working. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Eric Young and uh, Ty Dillinger again, but the show does take place uh, three weeks from Saturday, so it is coming up. I'm um, looking forward to it, see what transition and what changes are coming to NXT after that, who's being called up to the main roster. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'll be back next week with episode 105. Follow me on Twitter at BPIV underscore sports. And like, comment, subscribe to the show on YouTube. Check you back next week. Peace.